In this video I'm going to show you how to run and interpret a moderated mediation with process model 58 or 59. That is a moderated mediation where one moderator moderates the A path and the B path. In the case of model number 58 the moderator only moderates the A path and the B path. For model 59 the moderator also moderates the direct effect C prime and I would always use model 59 because if you use model 58 but in reality the C prime path is moderated then you can get highly biased results. So with model 59 you are safe because if the direct effect is not moderated then you simply get a non-significant moderation for the direct effect. So please always use model 59 instead of model 58. I will show you how to run those models and I will show you how to interpret the output. If we use the SPSS menu, here we put in the model number, our variables, and here we check the box for bootstrap inference for model coefficients. So we get results that are robust against a possible violation of the normality assumption or of the homoscedasticity assumption. Then further on to options, I like to set the decimal places to 3, mean centering only continuous variables, and for probing interactions, I like to use minus 1 SD mean and plus 1 SD. What's important, we need to check this box, pairwise contrasts of indirect effects. The reason for that is, with process models 58 and 59, we get, don't get an index of moderated mediation. That is, we don't get one value that helps us to decide whether we have a moderated mediation or not. So we have to compare conditional indirect effects to each other to conclude whether we have a moderated mediation or not. So that's it. We can run this. Of course we could use SPSS syntax instead. This would be syntax achieving more or less the same. And we could run it with R syntax. This would be the R syntax for process model 59. The output for all three options is basically the same. That's our next step, looking at the output. First I will explain process model 59 and then I will explain the very small differences you would get if you use process model 58 instead. Here are our variables and the sample size. This is the model for the A path of our mediation, in our case a possibly moderated A path. The key information is here the interaction. If this interaction is significant, then we have a moderated A path. And here it is significant. Here is the effect size for the moderation of the A path. So the moderation explains 2.7% additional variance of the mediator. If we have a significant interaction, as in this case, then we can look at the simple slopes, that is, at the conditional effects of our predictor on the mediator for three different values of the moderator. You only get this additional table for low p-values for the interaction. So if you have an interaction with a very high p-value, you won't see this table in your output. Next to the model for the B path and the C prime path, here we have two interactions because we estimate a moderation for the B path and we estimate a moderation for the C prime path. So we have to look at the product terms key, which number is which. Here in 1 is the moderation of the C prime path and in 2 is the moderation for the B path and that's the one that's primarily interesting for us. Here we can see C prime is not moderated, so we have no moderation for the direct effect but we have a moderation for the B path, because here this is significant. Here again the effect sizes for the moderation. The moderation of the B path explains 1.4% additional variance of the dependent variable. And since we have a significant interaction for the B path, we would like to look at the simple slopes, conditional effects, so the effects of the mediator on the dependent variable for three different levels of the moderator. If the interaction for the C prime path had been significant too, then we would have seen two tables of conditional effects. One table with the simple slopes for the C prime path and a second table for the simple slopes for the B path. Here we only get a table for the simple slopes of the B path. Then to the direct and indirect effects. In other models like 7, 8, 14, 15, you get an index of moderated mediation to help you decide whether you have a moderated mediation or not. Here this is absent because it's not possible to calculate such an index for theoretical reasons if you moderate the A path and the B path by the same moderator. So we need a different strategy to decide whether we have a moderated mediation or not. If both the A path and the B path are moderated, then we can look at the pairwise contrast between conditional indirect effects. 
First, what are the condition indirect effects? Those are the indirect effects for different levels of the moderator. And the pairwise contrasts compare those indirect effects to each other. So the contrast answer the questions, are there significant differences between those indirect effects? Which is another way of saying, is there a moderated mediation? Here we can see the confident, bootstrap confidence intervals between those conditional indirect effects are significant. And if at least one of those contrasts is significant, then we can conclude that our indirect effects differ based on the moderator. So we have a moderated mediation. Here we can see that for higher values of the moderator, our indirect effect gets smaller in the sense of more negative. However, the opposite is not true when it comes to those contrasts. Even if all three contrasts here were not significant, it would still be possible that we had a moderated mediation. Because here we compare only three different levels of the moderator. But maybe for other levels of the moderator, we would get a significant difference between the indirect effects. Hayes points out in his book that running process with the syntax, you could choose different moderator values to compare your indirect effects. Here would be the process code for SPSS or for R. With this additional parameter, we could tell process for which values of the moderator we want to get our conditional indirect effects and thereby our contrast for the indirect effects. So you could try out different values of the moderator that is different from minus 1 SD, mean and plus 1 SD. To sum it up, first you would look at the two relevant interactions, the interactions for the A path and for the B path. If both are significant, then look at the contrast between the conditional indirect effects. And if even though both interactions were significant, you had no significant contrast, then I would try out different values of the moderator and rerun the model with different conditioning values of the moderator. If only one of those two paths were significant, that is A path or B path, then you could try model pruning, that is run one of the model numbers where only one of those effects are expected to be moderated. So if you only have a significant moderation for the A path, you could try process model 8. If you only get a significant moderation for the B path, you could try process model 15. There you would get an index of moderated mediation that would tell you if you have a moderated mediation or not. I've made tutorials about process model 8 and 15 as well. You'll find the links in the description of this video. And if both paths, the A path and the B path, were not significant, well then in most cases you won't have a moderated mediation. In theory, you could try out different moderator values, but it's highly unlikely that you will get a significant contrast between conditional indirect effects. But in that case, you could still try out process model 4 to see whether maybe you have an unmoderated mediation. And in addition to the indirect effects, here we have the conditional direct effects of our model. There remains one possible problem. Earlier on, we looked at the A path and the B path and the C prime path. All those results were based on the assumption of normality and homoscholasticity. If you have checked those assumptions, then that's okay. Otherwise, you should look here at the bootstrap results, because the results here by bootstrapping would give you re correct results even if one of those assumptions were violated. For the interaction of the A path, here is the bootstrap confidence interval. It doesn't include the zero, so it's significant. So this confirms our earlier finding that we have a moderated A path. And for the interaction of the B path, here's our bootstrap confidence interval. It does not include zero. So again, this confirms the earlier finding that the B path is moderated. Finally, I would like to show you what differences in the output you could expect if you ran process model 58. The model for the A path would look basically the same. The model for the B path and C prime path would change because here we don't estimate a moderation for the C prime path, so we have only one interaction. And this interaction is the interaction for the B path. That is the interaction that is primarily relevant for us. And since we have only one interaction, we get only one R2 change. And what is different is here, now we don't get three conditional direct effects, but one unconditional direct effect. The rest of the output is basically the same. So if you know how to interpret process model 59, you know how to interpret process model 58 as well. That's it for process models 58 and 59. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.